Now that you have a really basic understanding of how mobile interfaces are designed, let's get started on designing ours for our mobile project in Catalyst. Now, we're not going to be using Catalyst for the design. In fact, we're going to be using one of the other applications, and we're going to import our project from a design file. Now, you can use Illustrator, Photoshop, or even Flash, and one of the file exchange, this new FXG file format is something we can export from Flash and create interfaces like this pretty effectively. And so let's get started with Photoshop just to show some basics. The very first thing that we need to do is create um, a new document at the size that we need. So the size that we're going to be using is uh, kind of a crazy size. It's going to be 240 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. Now, this is half the resolution of a true Android device, such as the Droid, um, or it's very close to the iPhone. And the problem, of course, with doing this type of project is it's hard to know um, whether or not um, you know the size that we're designing for is going to be the same on all the different devices that we hope that this application will be used in. And so that's something that is actually considered in the next version of Catalyst, and I'll demonstrate a little bit of that at the very end. Anyway, um, with designing our graphics, we can be aware that we can, of course, bring over our graphics from our other file and bring it in. So we could open up our graphics and just uh, change the size of our file and see if we can get things to work. We might want to change just the width, and then um, if we were to image image size and change our width just down to 240 from our original graphic or maybe our height down to 400 then what we might want to do is go to our canvas size and then crop the canvas size without distorting many of the graphics that you're going to be using with this. And the other option of course is design all of it from scratch. Hopefully it won't take too much time. Now um, one of the things that we want to be aware of is designing in Photoshop of course we should always consider things like using um, our tools as smart as we can, the smartest way possible. So using things such as smart layers, let's see, layer, convert that to a smart object, that's what I want. And I'll do Control J to make a few copies of that, and then I can move this down, move that down. And then I can select all three, maybe transform them all at the same time, because these are going to be buttons that kind of float in the middle here. And then, of course, grouping them. You can do that with Control J, and they make a group so that you can then go and uh, give all of the different layers names and everything else, whatever you need for your application. Now, this can be some, you know, time consuming, and I'm actually even going to suggest not to do this in Photoshop. However, I should point out that there are some Photoshop documents you can resource for really nice graphics to be able to use. For example, this is an Android GUI um, Photoshop file, and if you take a look at this, there's just so many folders and files to deal with, it can be a little bit confusing. So, um, I should point out, though, that there are some great files here. If I go to the second set, map buttons, that map buttons are the ones that I like here. I can take the move left, copy that, go into my file, whoops, that's the one I want, not that one. There's my interface, and I can paste it in, and I can scale it as needed. Now, this particular file is actually larger um, this file, I'm sorry, is half the size of an Android device, and the reason why, once again, is because the pixels on screen, on, on what we see in a desktop monitor, are about twice the size of those that are actually on a small screen with a mobile device. So that's why, even at the same resolution, objects look about half the size. Anyway, we could use this to help us draw the objects that we need. And so if you want to use Photoshop and graphics from those um, templates or something, that's totally fine to help you build your interface. In fact, it's suggested if you want things to look like it's an Android interface or an iPhone interface. Um, but um, I'm actually going to go into Flash to design my graphics, and I want to kind of show you why. Now, here is um, the graphic that I've already created for us. And um, I think that I had, let's see, 
in my initial setup I have so you can see the title bar and you can see the three buttons here. Now one of the benefits of using Flash is that it treats uh, layers in Flash like layers in Photoshop and then anything that's on those layers such as these three groups this is a group that has a button inside of it as well as text on the top um, anything that has <coughs> those different elements will be treated as a different layer in Catalyst so um, once again it it will convert our layers in Flash to layers in Catalyst just like we would have a group of layers in Photoshop so you have to be aware of that then you also have things like movie clips and if I take a look at this we've got here its title and I've given it some movie clip called title but I've even given it an instance name called title then behind it I have a movie clip called title bar and I have given it an instance name however you don't actually have to give it an instance name because it will do that automatically if you have an instance name on the button itself mine says sample button right now um, then it will actually give you the name of whatever it was if you want to give it an instance name this way I can say bio button whoops bio btn that way that will actually appear in catalyst now there's another advantage of using flash versus um, using other applications. One of the advantages is that it's got a great align tool that allows you to match the size and make sure that you space everything evenly. It has the ability if you turn on snapping to pixel, um, it has the ability to snap to pixels so that everything is aligned per, um, perfectly to pixels which is something that you want. You have the ability of course to, to bring in guides and make sure that everything is fitting perfectly in your file. Um, and one of the other benefits of using this is that if you have graphics that are off the stage, meaning that they're um, off to the side of the stage, like I have here in this very quick graphic that I've just designed, then these graphics will actually come into Catalyst the same way that they are in Flash right now, meaning that I'll be able to see this object that's on the side in Catalyst. If I do that in Illustrator or Photoshop, it will not happen. It will only see the graphics that are designed that are absolutely within the bounds of that 240 by 400 pixels. So it makes designing the graphics I think a little bit more difficult in the other applications. So we're going to get a little bit more experience with that in getting our graphics prepared for um, this size in just one moment in the next tutorial. Actually looks like I have a couple minutes left so I'm going to go ahead and change the graphics or make the changes that I need right now um, using uh, um, the last couple minutes available. So I'm going to find the pictures that I'm going to be using in this and take just take a look at all these pictures. They're all too large. So using an application such as XNView, I can easily resample all of these images to make them the size that I need. So I'm going to take all of these at one time, select all, right click, go to batch processing, and now I can change my transformation where I will automatically resize all of them to only 240 pixels wide and then any time that you resize something like that you also want to maybe give it a little bit of detail enhancement as well so now I'm going to go ahead and process that after I go back to general it's going to replace the image that I have beautiful so now all of these have been rescaled to 240 pixels tall except for this picture and I'm going to take my picture of my mother here and I'm going to cut it a little bit and I'm also going to resize it a tiny bit so 240 I'm going to make it 200 pixels wide I might even make it 180 pixels wide because I need it to fit with my text block that I'm going to be using so now I can save that and what you need to do is make sure that your pictures are ready to go at the right resolution because when you bring them into Photoshop or flash you need them to be at a hundred percent um, quality at least that's how you're gonna get the best quality in um, that application so go ahead and prepare your graphics like that if you can and then go on for the with the next tutorials